John and Jen Jeffries run four and a half thousand hectares on the southern Monaro on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. This prime agricultural land runs 15,000 breeding ewes and turns off between 15 to 20,000 prime lambs each year. In addition, they have a thousand head of cattle. They're always innovating. They're looking at great programs with rotational cropping and grazing, and they're looking to increase their stocking rate per hectare. To do this, they're investing in some innovative fencing. John, how are you going, mate? Tim, good, thanks. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your strategy with fencing. You're going away from the old barbed wire and you're going towards six foot high exclusion fencing. Yeah, well for our boundary fencing, we um, we came across this in oh, probably seven or eight years ago now on another yeah. farm, a drier farm than what we're at now. But yeah, the more we were investing in our own farm and our paddocks and improving our productivity, uh, the more the, the feral animals seemed to be building up. So we took the decision to to do a fence like this. It's ironic, isn't it? The more money you spend on improving your paddocks, the more of the pest animals you breed up. That's right, and so we did some budgets around what we thought the re result, the response was gonna be by exclusion fencing. Yep. And it was certainly significantly more than that, probably three or four times more than we'd actually budgeted on. Um, so that was- So it's a, it's a big improvement. Well, huge improvement, and we, we uh, you know, a power tussock like that there, when we, when we first put it up, we had sort of bare ground on both sides of the fence and yeah within within a very short period probably six weeks yeah the uh the paddock side of the fence started to grow feed and the the other sides just got nailed into the ground so straight away we could see a response but there's been a positive response to the natural environment on the outside of the fence as well and this is something we always talk about doubling stocking rates which you've achieved with these exclusion fences but we are sometimes criticised for putting up an exclusion fence because of the perceived negative impacts that it will have on the wildlife on the boundary side. You've actually seen a positive impact on the wildlife over a two year period. Can you explain a little bit more? Yeah, well, that's right, Tim. Well, we actually exclusion, we actually exclusion fenced along, we've actually got 140 hectares of yellow box woodland, grassy box woodland on the outside of the fence, which was prior to the fence was actually getting decimated. So you would have thought fencing the feral animals out into that landscape, but that would have just got destroyed. Now certainly there was a little bit of pressure on it for the first little period, but once the, uh, the feral animals were able to breed in such a way that the landscape was then able to sustain them, because previously obviously we're, they're 90% on our improved they're, land. They were eating off your improved land. That's right. So the population got itself back to a level that, that the bushland sustained you know what i'm saying so well, now we've, we've got beautiful examples of poa tussock that's right that's thriving that's right on the outside of your fence yes and it's because of a lowered population on the outside of your fence because animals not going in to the highly productive breeding ground that's right so we've actually had a you know a positive impact on our on our native landscape on the outside of the fence which we were which we we were very concerned with protecting you know what i mean so um you know it's been it's been a phenomenal result going in both directions. And so once again, a proof that great farming is great for the environment. 100%, yep. So John, talk to me about the energizer that you're using on this fence. Yeah, so we've just got a Gallagher 2800. Uh, we've been running that off, off solar. Okay. So solar and battery type model. So, cause we're, you know, we're, we're a fair way from mains power. Yep. And, and that seems to be working you know, working very reliably, and and we found, in fact, that once the the, the stock and also the um, the animals got used to the electricity, even even the native animals, even the native animals, um, once they got educated, and there was certainly a period of education, but once that became ingrained, uh, there was lessons learnt, and no longer were they challenging the fence to the point where, you know, we, we've been some periods through through some dry times where we've had the fence off and yet we're still having no pressure from feral animals because of that learn those those learnings in the early years so and horsepower is really important with a fence like this isn't it it's got to carry enough charge to have an electromagnetic field that comes out animals get educated to you run a pretty big energizer yeah that's right so we run 2800 and we've also got the high conductivity wire in the fence uh, but yeah you notice that yeah, over, over 
over a period, the, the feral animals just don't come near it. And, and uh, whereas previously, we were just having, you know, open slather, but we, we found a, we've come to a, uh, an end point, I suppose, in terms of we're having great results in the paddock. We've, we've doubled our stocking rate and we're getting return on investment from our inputs within our farm farm based system whereas before we weren't but also we're getting environmental benefits outside of the fence because the root population is 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 nowhere near it once was and it's at a sustainable level which is which is what a the environment's happy with and and we're also happy with as well so once again great farming great for the environment yep John, thanks very much for your time, mate. Good talking fences with you. Great, Tim. Thanks for the interest. Good on you. If you guys want to find out more, check the link in the description and make sure you subscribe because there's another video like this next week.